Welcome to the Zwift Community Live broadcast of the WTRL TTT World Cup. This is number, I think it'll be 259, but it's been a while since we've covered a WTRL uh, TTT, but uh, I remember saying that many, many a times for, I think through, it might have been somewhere in the 50s, all the way through the 150s or so, but uh, good to be back with the TTT. We're out on the big flat eight. Uh, I'm in Wisconsin. Dave has moved a little bit uh, to, <laughs> is it Southern Utah? Is that where you're at? Yeah. Uh, I haven't moved here, to be well, honest. Moved, not just, moved. Uh, no, yeah, <laughs> he's right. in yeah, the hotel no. room getting ready for a Belgian waffle ride, it looks like to me. <laughs> no, exactly. Exactly. We had the longest pre-show, Nathan, that I think we've ever had happen today. So I was able to give you the full rundown on how we had to change the start times and uh get out of some of the lower uh, or the higher elevations that they were going to race on because it's just too cold up there. But yeah, you know, Nathan, we did around a hundred of these. You're right. Talking about WTRL team time trials. And it really was my introduction to the in community at large uh, every Thursday. And it became part of that commitment. So it is really good to be back. And uh, we were noting some of the improvements that Martin has been ma uh, making along the way. Uh, and it looks like the enthusiasm remains sky high. So I do know that some super teams, we'll have a chance to talk about that, have assembled for this event. It's the World Cup. It's a big deal in a lot of ways when you look at it this is the most important day of virtual team time trialing that happens throughout the entire year so congratulations to everybody that made it to the start line nathan i'm just going to knock out a couple 
very important data points. The teams are limited to eight riders that they can start with. Now, there are won't be more than eight. If you are, you are disqualified from the event. But there might be less than eight. And if that's the case, we do have a little bit of categorization that happens below that. Uh, if you have, but not to get too into the weeds, but basically even teams with three or four riders will receive times. They'll just be categorized a little bit differently than the fastest teams. Uh, we do have some teams, Nathan. Well, we do, everybody today realizes that we've never raced a team time trial at this level on this exact course. Uh, and when you look at it, Nathan, it's a big flat eight. It's a rebel route. It's been around since 2021. But uh, nobody's really had a chance to do this at this level, have they? Yeah, it's event only. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure that this has ever been used. I'm pretty sure this is all going to be new times being set as far as fastest ever because it's never been used in the WTRL team time trial. So new course to this uh, specific event organizer. And uh, first time, I'm wondering if this is the first time ever with a team time trial on it altogether across all so. organizers. So pretty cool to see. we got a fresh slate. Yeah, very fresh slate out here today. Uh, we will be going over times now. Just as a heads up also, uh, this isn't a single event. If you're new to the WTRL TTT, um, it's kind of similar to ZRL, but ZRL is a battle within your specific zone that you are battling within. The TTT runs across the entire world to set the time for today. And today is the World Cup. It's a special day on the calendar that says, hey, this is if you're going to win for the world on the year, this is the day to be the champions. And they've selected the big flat eight out here for that. Good course, 31.4 kilometers uh, is what I'm seeing. 31.49 is the official over on, uh, over on WTRL's website. We were having some questions because there's so many other places that you can find uh, different distances, but according to, and I think this is, this is the most exact this one that I exact. found. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is going to be the most correct then. Cause I mean, if you go over to Zwift insider, which pulls from a lot of different data points, you can see the course and where it goes. It does start, uh, at the, um, pens over in the, uh, Fuego flats goes out on Fuego flats. You head up into Titans Grove, but then a left-hand turn down to Ocean Boulevard, a right-hand turn at the Jarvis Tree at Ocean Boulevard. Then you take that over toward the Watopia uh, Pier area, downtown Watopia, around the volcano, and then back over to um, Ocean Boulevard. And then you stay on Ocean Boulevard. You don't take a right back on over toward uh, Titans Grove, actually. You stay on Ocean Boulevard the same way you went before, and then are right back onto the Fuego Flats. So uh, that's why they call it the Big Flat 8, because it is the flattest route out there besides Tempest Fugit and TikTok, actually, but covers a whole lot more ground. You can kind of see there what it looks like. There ain't no, it's pan flat. <laughs> there ain't much going on there, that's for sure, as far as that goes. And there's a great little look at it as well from Velo Viewer, which we do appreciate them and the work that they put into putting that together for everybody in the world of Zwift. So that's the course. What do you think of the course, Dave? Great for a team time trial, Nathan. This is exactly what you're looking for. It's going to come down to, if you look at what are the tenets of team time trialing, it's power, precision, and endurance. And I think you'll have all three at the exact right level and proportions out there. So it does come down to, uh, you know, that fourth rider where the time is taken. I'll use that fourth rider as our main example. It's not always the case for every team you look at, but that fourth rider goes through the ringer out here as uh, the stronger riders on the team are in a very delicate position of wanting to push the pace but not blowing the team up. You can talk about that, Nathan, about what makes team time trialing such a unique discipline, but it's one of the situations where the strongest riders on the team have to really show uh, it's it's a level of professionalism uh, in your ability to be the strongest but not have to flex the whole time. That's a good point. Now, we did just see Zed Sun Venus coming on through just a moment ago, and I wanted to highlight them um, as uh, right there highlighting what they were fighting for, fourth rider across the line. You kind of saw a lead out there for a second 
from a rider who ended up dropping back and getting them all across the line as quickly as possible. That was the finish for the Zone 20 for Zed Sun Venus uh, as they came across the line. You're starting to get some times coming on in here uh, as the Dopio, I think, are only going to have for Zone 20 mutants so far out on course. In Espresso, Team CLS Dynamos are out there as well. We are looking at another team that is um, Team CLS Crafty as well that we have on uh, the screen here. I'm actually going to see if perhaps Crafty are interesting. I'm going to see if I can find, are they a Mocha team or not? That's going to be an interesting one to find for us here. But um, as we get out on course with the 20, we're going to finish up with 20 and then jump over to 21 to get the entirety of their um, race in just a moment here. So uh, Dave, as far as uh, you know, TTT goes, talk a little bit maybe to um, the different, what, what we're going to see for the way that the teams might organize their uh, timings out on course of when to put the efforts out and how they're going to be putting these efforts out. Yeah, I mean, Nathan, this is the, the beautiful science of the team time trial. It's all about understanding when to use your riders uh, in the opportune moments. And having more riders, certainly on such a flat course here, uh, you can talk about the workload distribution. And, uh, you know, it really depends on er the unique teams that we see. And to be honest, this day is not over as we wrap up Zone 21. There's more zones to race throughout the day as we make our way around the globe. But the teams racing right now have a bit of an advantage when you look at your pacing and your scheduling out here. We do have three different splits, 8K, 16, and 22. Well, you really do, when you can look at the markers that the other teams have put out there, gives you a really good feel for, ah, it, it's interesting, Nathan, it can tell you when you're not doing enough, but it can't tell you really when you're doing too much early that's the tricky tricky thing about pacing a team time trial yeah it's a good point it's a really good point speaking of the pacing and what the riders are going to need to be pacing around uh before we jump into any more of the live coverage here let's go ahead and just take a quick look at how things have played out so far for the day across all of the categories. Now, uh, as we take a look over at at the uh, WTRL.Racing TTT results, they do l update live. So this is going to be provisional results as people are finishing. Current course records on the day, as you can see, Vienna Espresso have no ladies yet. Riot have actually set the fastest team. Anna said that she was going to be doing this uh, TTT actually, and they've got a 43.37 so far for the Vienna Frappes. Vienna Lattes, you can see with the Ghost Cups there. Zed Neo Wise followed up uh, with Dopio ZDR Eat Dirt, Relentless Arnicky, Relentless Chaos, and then Eat Dirt 2 and Fostar Omega. Those are the current fastest times on the day across them. But here we go with our, uh, let's go maybe top three here or so, Dave, and uh, any honorable mentions uh, out on course so far. What we're looking at here, it looks like only three finishers, actually, from what I can see for this Dopio right now. Yeah, that 36.46, the fastest time that we've seen out on course, that average speed, the only team to go over 51, 51.4 kilometers. So certainly noteworthy there from ZDR, right, Nathan? I mean, that's rare. To see a team, well, to go it over to, 50 it is, is pretty insane. And the cool thing bananas. about WTRL is you can actually click on this little plus sign and see you know, the kind of power outputs that they had put out. And here's the riders. I mean, you've got Bjorn Anderson, the current reigning world champion out there throwing down five watts per kilogram at 374 watts. There may be a reason why they're taking this down. Well, yeah, you take a look at the rest of Christoph team on this squad as well, Nicolo Severa. It's hard to imagine anybody goes quicker than this time. That very well could be our World Cup winner that we're looking at there. Certainly fitting that Pio Otto's world champion, Bjorn, as you noted, is on the team, Nathan. Ben Meir as well, Rob Devlin. I'm glad we dug in a little bit deeper with, with this one, as these guys all deserve to hear a shout-out. Kyle Devine, how about that ride from Kyle with Paul Hamlet there as well, guest riding over from Wahoo Lacole and Karsten Cook. So we're seeing a lot of these super teams being put together together for the racing out here in the world cup on wtrl and this would be a, the great example of that over on the men's side of things nathan look at how well very efficient and strong but all of these guys over well either 
over five watts per kilo or very, very close to it for 37-ish minutes. Actually, the winning time, 36.45. You can see that they only finished with, Nathan, four riders. And that speaks to something that we've talked about for a long time. The perfect team time trial ride ends up with four across the line because you used up every available watt you scrape the bottom of the barrel and nathan can you imagine the pull that christoph team must have taken at the end of that run to drop off his four teammates yeah yeah and i bet you christoph actually produced more than 4.9 but he just ended up rolling in at the end right like some of these riders that have a little bit less they probably put out five and a half up front or something or five three or who knows and that's why they end up Oh, minutes back because there's a reality of look you can only do so much for so long and you sacrifice especially on a course like this you can really give a lot of speed to a team that's for sure um through those early uh over efforts over threshold efforts way over that is definitely going to be a situation where you're able to produce a lot of speed for your team uh, as you can see here, the differentiation in speed. One thing also to notice when we're looking at TTTs, we talk about this a lot in the past, is the difference in speed to watts or watts per kilogram on average across a team. You know, a team may be producing a lot more power and get a crazy amount. I mean, two kilometers per hour is a pretty significant, but when you get a little bit closer in these speeds and these times, you start to see what the finessing actually is between the riders and who's fighting or not fighting the wheels, who's actually keeping formation or not keeping formation and giving the most speed to their team with the power they're producing. Nathan, I mean, that really is the sweet science of team time trialing and Zwift craft. It, both of those things combined. The Zwift craft actually is equally, if not more important, than actually understanding just the nuts and bolts of how a team time trial squad operates. I mean, traditionally, that was always four riders or in the modern era or well not even modern era but in grand tour riding you would even see nine rider team time trials but this is our espresso class that we're looking at in wtrl's coffee classes it's relentless anarchy in our espresso group has got the fastest time at a 37 59 it's going to be eat dirt good to see the dads indoors riding trainers the 007 squads think second quickest time so far but that's a pretty decent advantage that you're looking at there for relentless anarchy they're 138 quicker than eat dirt and then the third quickest time from the inc euro aliens too so this is where I mean, these teams have been battling as you said nathan for over 250 weeks it's more than five years of racing on thursdays so and this is a big big deal so let's jump in with the frappes as well as relentless chaos has the fastest time there that's a 40 23 very very interesting to see dirty rascals you could get a feel for how many of the dirt teams have been uh, this is really their bread and butter the team time trialing on thursdays and dirty rascals the resistance their second quickest time is their 115 out but it's very close back to valhalla cigarette so we'll see what happens there throughout the 10 or so time zones that remain to compete as Nathan cues up our next group. Now, this will be the lattes that we're looking at. Remembering that as far as, well, actually, I'm going to hold that for a second. Let me just jump in with Eat Dirt 2 is they also have a one minute, 13 second advantage right now. So it's a pretty solid lead for over Evo Hardcore after 31 kilometers of racing 31 and change tzp the suzu ren team sitting third right there as it looks like nathan that battle for third was just a couple of seconds difference there so get a feel for the thousands and thousands we just are getting an update we're getting an update and it came through chat so i had to do it mix eight have and look, I, they have gotten the fastest team, actually. Toyota Coyote T have an update. So an update did just come through. And as it's coming through, wow. we have an even faster time. Same One speed. Second. One, One second. second. With Simon Nielsen, Pim Van Dien, Vidar Mail, Arn Jacobs. I mean, this gel power. I mean, this is a monster team. They finished with four again. Look, this is what we are talking about. Dave. It is all about the sacrifice early on this course, at isn't this it? At this level? 
at this level, it exactly comes down to that. You know who right now has got to be stoked is Martin at WTRL to see this kind of turnout. Nathan, there's a women's team that we haven't talked about yet that is very comparable and just the superstar status. Every single name on this team is highly recognizable on that mix. Real quick, real quick. I got to jump in. I'm going to jump in here real quickly and just notice though, there is, look at how efficient ZDR e Dirt are. 51.4, almost the same speed. Look at the watts per kilogram. Look at the pure watts. Look at mix eight. Big watts. Big watts per kilogram. No offense, guys. But the other boys, they this second place team, I think we're more efficient. They just got out muscled is what it looks like to me. I mean, uh, but it was only 1.5 seconds or whatever. I mean, this is quite an eye-opening result here in some ways in in two ways obviously that it's so close and secondly the watt per kilogram differences here are massive as far as the pure watts i mean these eight guys in mix eight just threw down so hard that you couldn't deal with it is what it came down to they just i mean it was like yeah it was was essentially there's just too much of a chokehold on that power 30 Six minutes at five and a half watts. Uh, that is, <laughs> it's crazy. That's incredible. It's crazy. Uh, I, I don't it's know crazy. that you could do it outside of this environment to have the other riders that are relying on you. That's so, what really makes team time trialing so special is the commitment that the riders on a team have made to each other. Nathan, that might go down as one of the greatest team time trials ever. I wish we could have watched every single pedal stroke of that one. But that's what you get when you've got this situation with the World Cup. And literally, as we go around the globe out here, there's going to be battles like that. I don't know if it gets much closer than one second, but I wouldn't guarantee you that that's the closest race that we see today either. So, big flat eight. It is a strong man or strong woman's course. No question about it as the World Cup rolls on here. All right, Nathan. So, That's going to go down now as our Mocha class top three that we've got on screen here with Evo Lightning quickest time at 45.57. They've got Swedish Swift Racers sitting second and four-star Omega third. We'll see if that updates with the categories that have yet to race, but that's where things stand in the Mochas right now on the biggest day of team time trialing that we see all year. WTRL's World Cup has got 40.53. That's going to be one minute, 20 seconds faster there for a. This is the ladies. The yeah, the ladies are. That's a solid result for this ES- ESRT. That's well, a team. Emma Belfort Emma is Belfort. on that team. Mika also raced there. Interesting. And I'm just checking something here. Mika's on a double day today, it sounds like. Interesting. Mika is an absolute legend. So. At this level, so look what she did there. 4.3 watts per kilogram. The Swedish gravel superstar, Nathan, is back now. So we actually, I don't want to bury the lead, but it sounds like you were just talking with Gabby, Gara, there. Gabby's, what, half an hour now into her race, and she's got a group of women with her. Your jaw will drop. But let's look at, we've been, this is incredible. Aquila ESRT, Nathan, with a 40, 50, Three. So that's what I'm talking about. That's going to be very valuable knowledge for the Wahoo Lacole ladies, isn't it? They've got a mark now that they recognize you have to respect that time from ESRT. TSC, the cinnamon rolls are in. They're only 120 back there. Aeonian RT sitting third. Uh, I, I mean, this is just some incredible racing that we're witnessing. You can see that Wahoo Lacole. Is Wahoo Lacole Vitesse going to be the team starting with seven? That's Gabby's team, Nathan. I see that they just threw with the split with a four seconds off of that Aquila time at split one. Correct wow. me if I'm going down the wrong path, but I think yeah, that's what that's, we've got. Yeah, that's what we've got. Now, interesting, though, the boards that are here are a little different than the boards that I have. So I'm wondering if I have a little okay. bit of distance mark. My distance markers might be a little bit off. So I'm going to go... As we get into the actual racing, everyone, let's go just off of the final time because the, the, the current times that I'm seeing here across these are not matching. Our live time boards are not matching the boards I'm seeing actually here 
in uh, the the website. So I don't want to cause any confusion there at all. Sure. This is a heads up. This is a heads up, everyone. But uh, let's statement. go and take a Good quick. Catch. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Yeah, well, I did because well, I caught it because I was like, well, interesting. Um, looking at the the live boards, which hey, can you I show me? Yeah, I can show you. I can show you exactly what I'm talking oh, about. Show me boards. Aquila ESRT. Oh, go no, ahead. No, no, no. Yeah. Who's on that? Yeah, who's on that team? They, okay, so Emma Belfort, Mika Soderstrom, looking a little deeper. I mean, how about this team? This is going to be a very interesting match. And how about the incredibly unique situation that you've got a racer racing against herself on a team that already raced? That's mm -hmm. Mika. Mm -hmm. it, that's so incredibly unique to what WTRL and community is all about. All right, let's take a quick look here and then jump down into the racing here across the Frappe. Synergy Power at the top there, 43.19. Yorkshire Gold Blend. Riot now falling down to third, 43.37. See if they can hold on to a podium for the day. Uh, so that's the top three right now for the Vienna Frappes. Uh, Erda Emu's down there. Good to see the Pavlova. There's a lot of familiar names here. Dave, I'm liking it. I'm liking the... Uh, Coming back to the WTR, I'm seeing some people in chat here loving us being back on Thursdays. Great to see you. And there's uh, a familiar name that knows what they're doing, Dave, in the Vienna Lattes Crush Pod 2. Ah, uh, some of the really great memories, Nathan. And the creativity with the names, even though it was only a small part of why folks are here, that creativity shows the passion. And I think that uh, it just feels good to see everybody still out here doing their thing. So there's always going to be the new teams and new riders coming along injecting the fresh energy into wtrl but certainly the legacy of this league over you know we're talking coming into six years of this now it's been really cool so martin keep up the good work there crush pod this group of women have been just inspirational flat out awesome 44 47 the fastest time let's see if that holds on today it was 47 seconds quicker than galaxy i mean there's another i mean every one of these names nathan brings back some real smiles galaxy supernova velocity there second quickest time and then born to bike women have finished with the 4610 slotting in at third currently. So that's where things stand for our Vienna Latte group in our coffee classes here. And jumping across for Vienna Mocha, last one we'll look at before we head into the live racing Kirschmer Tyrion Bees, Synergy Force, and Crush Pod Cortado. It's a 4618 that the Vienna Mochas will be aiming at throughout the zones for the entirety of the day. So how many zones? I think there's like 30 zones now is what we're looking at. Somewhere around 30 or so zones is what the uh, WTRL is putting on. Pretty insane when it comes to the uh, amount of work that goes into that to track all those across the entirety of the day. So that's going to be the battle. We're jumping down in with this is going to be zone 20 is what we're going to hit up now as we jump in with Zone 20. The Vienna Espresso have Wahoo, Lacole, Vitesse, Aeonian RT, and Synergy Heat. And as we look at this board, 8-kilometer marker followed up by the 16-kilometer marker and then the 22-kilometer marker at 28.35 for the time so far. Their final time or current time throughout the entirety of the race is that final time on the right-hand side. So currently... They've been tracked up to a 29.59. I think that does include the uh, leaving the pens, as you can see the live time there uh, on top on the upper right on our screen is a little bit different. Zoe Langham, Nathan, as we take a look at the Wahula Cole team, that uh, this is going to be really, if you want to talk about great memories, well, We'll have a good chance here to watch a lot of the names that help introduce us to esports racing. And I know that, well, downtown Rachel Brown. Here's Mika, the Swedish champion, freshly minted Swedish champion. It doesn't get better than Mika Soderstrom as she is taking a monster pull right now. Nathan, you might be familiar with that Brazilian flag and Gabby Guerra. 
to be all, at full disclosure, racing right next to Nathan. That's why you'll see him wearing a coat if we go back in cam as they keep it cold in there, keeping it frosty as Gabby puts out. She is like a solar flare when she hits out. This Wahoo Look Hole team executes at the very, very highest level, Nathan. They're in a mix for a World Cup win. It's going to come down to a matter of seconds. Perfection is going to be required. And how about – so, Nathan, for me – Based on many different elements, Elise Gallegos wins the Rider of the Year last year for us in Zwift Community Live. She's brought it on the bike. She's brought it in social media. She's a tremendously good-hearted mom of two, and her commentary with you during Zwift games was off the charts good. I'm a huge fan of every one of these women on this Wahoo Lacole team, and I'm sure let's just keep going because I don't want to leave anyone out here. But I mentioned Rachel Brown, Rachel, and there's Joe Patterson as well, the Irish star on this team who always brings the heat. You're in with Zoe Langham right now, Nathan. I would say that Zoe on the pantheon of all-time Swift greats, she's right there. 100%. And uh, Zoe Langham, I think uh, she's a little bit quieter on the esports front as of recently, mainly I think because of a new team that she's joined in real life, actually, with a little bit more focus. But, I mean, second place at World Championships, uh, definitely one of the strongest riders we've ever seen in the world of esports. Great to see her out here in the TTT. And one of the things I think, one of the things I've heard from the uh, the ladies is they just want to get out here and absolutely demolish themselves for an amazing training ride at the same time being competitive. They just want to race to race. That was with a huge attitude that I've been hearing from them when it comes to these team time trials. And one thing that I'm noticing, you know, with seeing all those dirt names, um, I think also that, you know, the dirt and the Merc crowd, I think there's a reality of those that like <laughs> they're at home they, or, or they're, they're, they have a common bond to show up and race. And it's a way that they can express that racing on a weekly basis. And I think that's the reason why you see such a huge amount of those riders showing up day in and day out for the TTT. I couldn't agree more, Nathan. How about, by the way, I knew I was missing someone, Tanil Otto. Tanil uh, is a legend in South African road racing. And seeing her on this team, and that's Tanil that you've called up right now, uh, she is one of the really experienced riders who just doesn't miss a beat. So they're flat out flying out here. But I agree with you. The secret sauce of WTRL was community. That's where it all started. But the intensity of the racing, and thanks, Nathan's going to show us Tanil's uh, awesome attitude out there. Again, former pro road racer who definitely uh, another one of the riders who is a real attribute to the world of Swift out here. And uh, let's go ahead and see if we can start bringing in some times, though, for the riders as they are making their way around the course. This is going to be the Vienna Espresso. And currently, right now, Vitesse at the top, it looks like, at the 28.35. It's going to be Aoni and RT at 28.46. And Synergy Heat a little ways behind here at 29.35. We'll see if we can jump in with Aoni and RT. But these ladies keeping it all together. How many starters do they have here, Dave? It looks like they're starting with seven. seven missing I Illy Gardner, who didn't make the start today. Yeah. Um, you know, Nathan, I'm looking at this group of women here on screen. And I'm thinking if you gave me a reasonable budget as a team director, I could put together the world's greatest gravel racing team with this group of women right here. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm all in on that one. I'm all in on that one. 100%. It seems like a no-brainer, doesn't it? They all have great attitudes as well. Uh, Mika Soderstrom needs to come over and hook up with Gabby Guerra and show up and just do some of the unbounds or some of the bigger gravel races here in the States. Uh, it's always better when you have uh, these kind of challenges to take it on with a couple of riders that are like-minded, that you see eye-to-eye -eye with on things. And if you can race a team time trial together... It's a lot like, Nathan, they, th there's been a joke in America. If you could take a tandem with your significant other and go spend two weeks in Europe and still be in a relationship when that's done, then you can do anything. 
And I think if you can raise a team time trial together, you can do just about anything. Is it really is an intense, intense experience when you're all the way at your limit. You find out what people are about. You find out who quits. You find out who has your back. And these women definitely, what we need to slow down Gabby a little bit. Did, Six um, watts per kilogram on the front. I think they saw crushing. maybe that they were a little bit behind the ball as uh, that time from Belfort's team ESRT, they're going to be a tough one to beat out here today, aren't they, Dave? And this is great to see. Yeah. The battle's still continuing on after Zwift Games, Dave. They still live on. You wouldn't know it, would you? Unless you were involved I in all these, is... you know, this culture of cycling. Virtual cycling's alive and well on April 4th, 2024. You know, still battling with this top level. Isn't it? It's amazing to see. No, Nathan, that's a huge point. That's going to be the biggest takeaway of the day is the fact that we're into April. Racing is full on. I mean, Perry roubaix Femmes is Saturday, yet these women are still showing up, and the guys, for that matter. So this is a turning point for Zwift Racing. There is no doubt in my mind that uh, what you really – you realize is these folks enjoy this they're doing it because it's something there's no prize money here there is pride but there's also a sense of commitment and you know i'm gonna guess that more than a few of these riders like that swedish jersey you see right there are here because they wanted to race with their friends as we take a look through here, it is going to be slowing down a little bit at the front here. Patterson finds herself off the front, so it looks like a gap had opened up. Patterson now slow. This is big time loss. This is so a, a lot of these this is a struggle here. Interesting. I think some riders maybe yeah, well, were these, struggling. I don't think that these women have raced to collectively. I know that these women haven't really raced together in this mix. So there's going to be a little of that figuring things out, right? And uh, ESRT set such a high bar that right now they're kind of pushing these women into a place, Nathan, that they might be not that familiar with. And that is possibly getting a uh, second place in a team time trial. I don't think they signed up for that. And they're here to not let that happen. And every well, now and then when you push too hard, things break. Yeah, and ESRT, they are the new kids on the block in some ways. And that pickup of Evan, Emma Belforth and what we saw her do at the Zwift Games, it is a sting for sure. And it is most definitely, you know, one, one of these situations where some new blood comes in and suddenly the surprises happen. Isn't that, I mean, you see that so often, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. Chemistry is a huge part of any team. And a team time trial squad, I mean, it may be less than a NCAA Final Four squad, but there is a huge amount of that understanding and, and figuring it out along the way. So they're down to it, Nathan. This is the absolute nitty-gritty, the business end of this team time trial here. Gabby pushing the pace. Now, this is working better. Now, time will be taken off of the fourth rider, but you can see, unlike the men who raced earlier, it doesn't look like they're going to have it down to just four. So they're not quite executing. And again, to be fair, this is the first time that this group has raced together. So they're going to bring the whole team home. So many strong women. There is no weak link out here. But Nathan, the time looks to me like it's going to be very, very close. I think they may yeah, have done it. 40, 53. I don't know, Dave. There's a lot of, there's a lot. I mean, they still got a K to go. Can they finish this K in a minute or so? I don't, I don't know. 40, a little less, little, okay, so they have a little more than a minute right now. To the yeah, line. I, mean, I think so. You think I they think got it? So. Yeah, I, I guess, you know what? Hope is a huge, huge element here. But I do think that they've got, again, folks, we're, this is a sketch that we're talking about. And obviously, this is going to be, I mean, here's what I think, Nathan. It's going to be less than three seconds separating the winning teams. Yeah, it's going to come right down to just a few seconds, which is exactly what we saw at the top level of the men's racing as well. And this is going to be the first time we're going to see for the day coming live from this Vienna Espresso team right now. Wahoo LaCole coming to the line. Full gas. Mika Soderstrom, Joe Patterson, Gabriela Laguerra, Rachel Brown. The kick is on. 10 watts per kilogram. Guerra's giving it a go, it looks like here now. As Soderstrom oh, now man. jumps on the wheel, but it's fourth across the line. Fourth wheel across the line. The ladies all looking to hang on. And across there, there they go. They've done it, it looks like, by about 10 seconds, maybe a little bit more than that. Nicely, nicely done. Now, oh, 
I was trying to jump across over to the Sheer BL13 will. ladies, and the BL13 ladies are just just finished up as well. Laura Meyer, we're seeing here as well as uh, Luis Gamps, Jill Pruitt was in there as well as Leah Stern, as they had started right around the same time in just a different category, actually. So we'll get their time in just a moment as well. So nicely done for the uh, Vienna Mocha as well as I think also their Synergy Heat and Ionian RT. Let me see if we can find them out on course as well in just a moment here. All right, while you're doing that, Nathan, I should note for folks that that's not a definitive win there as the day is not over. We still have many zones yet to race. So that fastest time, and we'll have a chance, and we can always send you to WTRL.racing to look at the updated leaderboards as the day continues here. But that was an absolute Donnybrook out here on the big flat eight. First time we've ever raced. Obviously, you're looking at course records, but I think it's the intensity of the racing that we saw and how about that finale there for our elite women? So this is going to be now just another. It looks like that might be 22 even that we're looking at. We were just with zone 21 racing. But uh, the world will populate right after they come across the finish line. And you'll see huge groups of riders as everyone reemerges out of their event-only space into Zwift proper. Yeah, we're just looking to jump across here. Apologies, everybody, on the images here. We'll get them as quickly as we possibly can because I know that Cecilia Hansen and crew oh, wow. are out on course. Uh, they started a little ways after uh, the WLC crew, and here they are. This is the Ionian RT team that we were talking about, 39-20. This is close, too, Dave. They're a little ways behind from what Look we had just group. saw. I seen. mean, White Claw, Hill. Katie Hill on this team. So this is Aeonian's A-plus squad that we're looking at. Nathan, uh, as we said, that time might not have been your winning time. Well, look at what Aeonian is doing out here. Now, this is a team that does have a tremendous amount of experience racing together. If you want to look at kilometers raced in team time trial formation together, Aeonian might be the number one team of all. Nathan. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a really good point. They are one of the top teams, most experienced by far. You know, really, Aonian, I think they may be known kind of as the, the winningest team when it comes to the ladies uh, in, in recent years, especially across ZRL, uh, I would say. Uh, well, from a community standpoint, they show up week in and week out. Uh, Lawson is riding here with them as well. Marion Lawson, great to see. Vicki Whitelaw, Katie Hill, all coming to the line. I think. They did drop uh, off Daniela Estrate, but I would think that's only because Estrate put in mega pulls early on for the team. Yeah, she's been a captain on the Aeonian squad, the Romanian rider Estrate. So that's a really good estimation. As we were talking about with the men earlier, coming down to four riders, it shows you nearly perfect execution, and that's exactly what you've got from one of the original super squads, Aeonian finishing up. Nathan, tremendous job on the broadcast. Brings back so many great memories looking at Team Time Trial. I know the challenge is on your end. It must feel itch. This is going to be Tiffany Penner. I'm a huge <laughs> fan of the pride yeah. of Manitoba. She's Canada. awesome. What She's a awesome. Rider. Yeah. Oh, it's so but good. A, so good. Yeah. Look at it. And, and Dave, the thing that I'm a huge fan of is the leaps and bounds that we have seen from her as far as progression She's as incredible. an esports athlete leading this team across the line. Penner, watch out because she is motivated. I can see it in She's the way her results are yeah. coming across. And she is showing up, putting the work in. Esports athlete amongst women of the future. And the results we saw from her in Zwift Games coming in this season, being such a young talent to, the, to this world of racing, it's great to see. I remember Nathan Zwift Games and people saying, Tiffany who? And we were lucky enough that we got to watch her race some ZRL and knew who Tiffany was and had watched her just absolutely crush it. And she she made the final 10 on the sprint games uh, for Zwift games. And I, I thought that was the greatest. For me, you don't have to win a bike race to win at life. And uh, that top 10 was a huge win at life for Tiffany Penner. So I hope she sticks with this. She could end up being world champion someday. It'd be amazing to see, especially with the come up 
through uh, the way that she has been discovered in the world of racing bikes. Now, we're jumping across here now because they just have the coolest name. I mean, this, uh, this crew here, <laughs> this is the Cheesecake crew, I believe, with uh, Jason Pinkerton. I'm seeing Andrew Downey, Jason English, Daniel Ehrman, Nathan Flynn, and Naofumi Nozaki. CC, Chase Cake, just this is the Cheesecake Crew. I love these guys. They have, they have cheesecake in Australia? I had no <laughs> idea. Let us know, Australians. Let us know what your cheesecake is named and how it how it all What's works. The situation? We need to know. We What's need to the know sitch? the cheesecake yeah. situation. That's the that's that's what we need in our life is Australian cheesecake. I hope Anna Russell's doing well. She's one of my favorite people out there. Your colleague from The Wrap, which uh, I'm sure you've got a lot to talk about coming up on Thursday. No, but, that was last uh, night. Would... And if you didn't listen, well, it was last pretty night, spicy. I'm sorry, it is it Thursday. Pretty, it was pretty spicy last night. That's for sure. I'll, let, I'll just say that. So if you haven't checked it out. If that shows you. Definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, bring your Bring your A game. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> now I'm a little nervous. To, I'm I was a little traveling nervous. yesterday. I'm nervous as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not after putting that out there, but we'll see how it goes. I hope my name didn't come up now. That's the that's the concern. <laughs> the entire um, broadcast was only about you. <laughs> oh kidding. boy. <laughs> just messing with you, Jack. All right. So uh Nathan, this was fun. World Cup. Team time trialing, WTRL, so many great memories. It, it all feels like they're just doing tremendously well. To see the athletes represent the way they did, Mika Soderstrom racing for two teams out here. So I guess we're, we might have to give her a gold and a silver medal. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see what comes up, uh, what, what ends up coming up as the results. We don't have them just yet. They're going to be preliminary. but um... She might not get any medals. I mean, there's right? still I plenty mean, of, there's still races, you know, know, Europe tends right. to be the fastest, right? It tends to be the fastest, but let's see if America shows up. Come on now, USA. Let's see if well, the Americas, as well as this entire side of the world, Brazil could show up. Who knows? You know, there's still plenty of racing to go throughout the entirety of the other hemispheres of the world here. But we're in with the entirety team here. This is going to be Neil Fumi Nozaki. Andrew Brownie, Nathan Flynn, Jason Pinkerton, Jason English, and Daniel Ehrman. And they are the Cheesecake Crew bringing it in here for the Espressos in Zone 21. Hey, while they do that, Nathan, I do want to encourage all of our friends out there in the Swift community to really get behind the Perry roubaix Femmes coming up. It's going to be an incredible edition on Saturday. It's really cool that they've got an event on Saturday and Sunday for Perry Roubaix instead of trying to put them both on the same day. I get that what the Flanders Classics folks are doing, but I really appreciate having a unique, it's such a big, big, important day of racing. So giving the women their own day makes a ton of sense. So it's a great time to get out there, show your support, be vocal about that. Don't be shy. It's, it's, never been a better time for women's sports getting some momentum going let's really have a fantastic day saturday so nathan i'll be texting you during the event just to check in to see what <laughs> these going guys on. I'll these be kids who are serious dave sorry i'm sorry I'm, I'm, i don't mean to interrupt here yeah, no, they're going with for you it. Yep. like watch the fems perry roubaix this weekend all over it 100 percent. i'm excited to see who takes it down and you know it's been quite the battle at the top end of the women's crew, you know, as, as far as who's going to be winning the classics yeah. this year. So I'm really, I'm really excited to see how this plays out this weekend. Um, as far as in real life cycling, I'm the, well, I'm only going to mention it cause chat is really on top of it, but um, ah, too bad to hear here. It sounds like things may be changing for the tour de France this year, as far as who might be able to win. And that's really, really sad news to hear. Uh, that uh, I'm seeing Jonas Vinigo broken ribs and collarbone. How c can he r recover? Just coming in, literally, this is news on the spot right now that we're hearing of. Um, so I know that's not exactly related to the TTT, but that's big enough in the world of cycling. Dave, wow. I would think to make a mention. I'm, I'm definitely upset. Yeah. That's 
Not, not good. Not, what not I good. Not good. Was really well, to hear. what kind of uh, recovery could we see? I mean, and how serious can it be? A lot of times, I'm hoping there's a lot of hype. That poor team. I'm hoping there's My a lot gosh, of hype. Between... Right? Wout? Wout? Ugh. Wout, now this, and uh, the young American, Matteo Jorgensen, has been the bright spot for them in what has been an incredibly dark, dark start to the season. So, ah, boy. That's, yeah. Well, uh, and I'm a huge fan of the human being that Jonas is as well. I mean, I, I really enjoy having him as our Tour de France champion. He's been a real class act. So definitely uh, it shows you how this sport, I mean, we talked about it with Wout Van Aert, how uh, it gives you so much joy and it breaks your heart and you just don't know what's around the next corner. So today will be a broken heart day. 100%. Sorry. Shoot. It's hard. Yeah, it's, it's hard to. Bummer. Hard. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was not almost not going to mention it. I'm still excited for everything that's happened at the TTT. It's not exactly Zwift world necessarily, but I think a lot of pe- riders here find motivation from watching those riders, you know, in the women's tour oh, de France, absolutely. in the men's tour de France. And, you know, they, they, they chase after those legends, you know what I mean? To, to have their own narrative across their stories as they race. And that's one of the beauties of this is that across this virtual platform, all these riders from their homes are now, and some of these people never raced in real life at all. Many actually at this point, no racing in real life at all. I I mean, honestly, I've coached multiple athletes at this point who just came in and like, Hey, I'm a C rider. I've jumped up to B and I want to be competitive in Zwift B. Like, how can you help me out? And like, this is stuff that's coming out of the woodwork left, right and center. And but at the same time, I think that they look toward, you know, some of that in real life legends as well to be like, hey, I'm chasing that narrative of being a racer like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of chasing a narrative of being racers, these five are into it now. The last uh, call a little more than a K out here. Yeah, I think this is going to be the Sisu racing Lampamampi. I don't know what Lampamampi means. You have any idea? What lamp am I? No. <laughs> no. That's an interesting it, one. It's got to um, be New Zealand do, something, like, right? Like, Took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say, that's an Anna Russell question. If this were Zwift rap, you'd probably have an answer. But with me, I would just say, huh, Or is it Finnish? It's Finnish. Sure. It might be Finnish. They even have, could, if you actually, search, a, if you yes, search lap, right. lamp and moppy, there's a there's there's a video that comes up of this team doing a team time trial. Actually, I love it. That's so awesome. They're they they're Although, the real you know deal. What? They what? own that. They what? own that name. <laughs> it's funny because what we've learned from Teppa Lorio and some of our other Finnish friends, like Jenny Eck, is that 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 looks Finnish, doesn't it? The if you if you just stop for a second, it like I bet you that's a Finnish term. Sisu is a well-known Finnish uh, We've talked about that for years, about what Sisu. Uh, I even had a chance to talk to Valtteri Botas. The F1 that guy looks like Walt exactly Van Aert. That. Is that actually that guy, or is that Walt Van Aert? As we're talking about, maybe I just have Wout on the mind now. Oh, that's funny. But uh, Jeremy Lefebvre, as he makes his way to the line, it looks like here, and uh, the rest... They're going to be looking to finish up. We will have um, overall results for the day in just a moment here to take a look at as we finish up our broadcast. We're going to try and jump across a few more of the riders, though, across this zone 21 as they finish up. The way that things start now, though, just so everybody knows, it is a little bit different the way that we have to run the broadcast now because everybody gets to start kind of at their own time and in their own category in the pens. And so because of that, we don't have a consistent category to follow in game. So we end up kind of just jumping around to who we can find within the category. So uh, because of that, that is why we're kind of jumping all over the place on the day for you. But uh, we're trying to do our absolute best uh, to get as many as we possibly can and uh, give you an idea of what's what. All right, so Jeremy's team done and dusted out here. As again, zone twenty-one. Now it looks like most of our riders finishing up, but we do have plenty of riders that are getting ready or will be looking at the times. 
you can always go to wtrl.racing to see exactly where things are standing at this moment. Yeah, I think we'll have an update here. I want to say thanks to Martin, actually, for helping us out to give us, I think we have overalls in just a moment here. And uh, and it's still not an overall because it's only up to this moment. Yeah, right? it's only up just to this moment. That, that is a great So point, there is actually. no overall. Yeah, right. That is actually a great point uh, that it is only up to this moment uh, as we get these updates coming in. Uh, a lot of times folks like to take the broadcast and use it in their social media, but you couldn't use this as your overall yet because we still have teams yet to race. 100%. But as of right now, and a big thanks to Martin for putting this together quickly for us, let's go ahead and run through the top 10s at this moment as the Zone 21 has finished up at April 4th, 2024 at 2... Four, well, I'm going to reload it and say at 2.14 p.m., this is the result. And say so it's what's notable with this group is... I would bet the chances of a team going faster than this basic tie that you're looking at at 36.45 are about one in a billion. That that's, that a pretty, that's, that's a pretty right. wow. So go buy <laughs> yeah. a lottery ticket. Let's go. Yeah. I'm winning the lottery today. Now, I think, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, but you know what I'm saying, Nathan? That's almost unbeatable. Now, there are other categories where the time that's leading right now won't end up winning today, I'm sure. But this one, I would say you can probably bank it. But to be fair, you got to leave the leave the door open. But mix eight with just one second quicker than ZDR. There is no way I imagined anybody beating that time. That's as good as it gets, and that's what WTRL's team time trials are all about. A ding-dong battle going on out there for the World Cup. Let's see if that's actually going to be your gold standard with Toyota Cryo RDT coming in with the I mean, to say respectable is underselling it. A 37.09 for Toyota Cryo RDT, one of the original super squadras there in third. Vikings, hell, fourth place today they were 11 seconds quicker than la bomba from swedish swifters they're in at fifth another name we'd recognize nathan mutant x sixth place today zdr that's going to be zdr2 presented by eat dirt they were seventh cheesecake crew who we saw out there with a 3809 in at our eighth quickest time at the moment Holding on for a spot in the top 10 ninth are the watt bombs from bl13 and then as it stands right now this is the bubble Valhalla Skid Bladnir, they're sitting 10th with a 3946. So you're going to need to go quicker than that to get into our top 10 today. That's going to be where things stand. Yeah, that is going to be our dopios. I'll take the espressos here, Dave, as we run through the top 10s quickly across all of these. Run the Sargon Anarchy right now sit at the top with a 3759. Wahoo Lacole Vilo Forte, 3851. Then it's going to be Z4R. Golden Attic at a 3909, and then Not Unknown, ESRT, 3925. Evil Bullet, 3935, followed by SC Waffles at a 3838. Wow, real close there between SC Waffles and E3007. At seventh place right now, as of this moment, and Innovation Euro Aliens 2, 3941. Sisu Racing, there they are. Lampy Mampy in ninth <laughs> right now. At 39.52, they uh, Google that term. You'll find them. They're out there. Riding dirty, 39.54 in 10th place right now. So, uh, Dave, Cheesecake Crew, I'm not seeing them there. Did you see Cheesecake Crew? Come on now, Cheesecake Crew. What's going on? I thought for sure that they yeah. would be in that top, top spots. I'm going to reload this and just make sure that we didn't miss anything. But no, dang, I thought they were going to make it. They're going to have to eat some more cheesecake. Yeah, it shows you how, or less. Or One less. of the two, <laughs> right? <laughs> Dirty beasts on top of the table there. This is going to be our frappe group. So Dirty Beasts with a 39.16. They're going to be on top of the table as it stands with Motown ESRT sitting second and the Vikings Jormungandr in third. Very close, though, in between second and third. CMC Express in fourth. Vikings Valhalla fifth. Garage Pain Chasers sixth. Two guys, Fulhano. They're in seventh right now. You can see, though, Nathan, at 40-11, it was about a half second separating sixth and seventh with Relentless Chaos 
Chaos in eighth. Ninth place as it stands for Adam Racing, ART Atomic. And then Zed Sunar Neptune holding on to that 10th spot with a 40-59. So let's see if they can remain in jeopardy or get uh, hold on to a top 10, I should say. Nathan, I'll throw it back to you here. Yeah, I'm looking across. I believe we just jumped over to the lattes. It just didn't highlight for us. Uh, you didn't is. read through lattes, did you? No, you didn't. Okay. I did not. Eat, I was just making sure we're not going to double up here. Eat your two at no, 41. That's what... <laughs> well, go ahead. Go. What was you going to say, Dave? Oh, I was going to say, that's what caught me, though. I was worried that I had missed something. So good job by you, Nathan. Yeah, eat dirt two forty one fifty eight right now point seven eight one. I like it that they got that little extra on there just in case it's needed sometimes. Viking Asgard in second place right now for the lattes at forty three oh three, and it's gonna be two guys nada forty three oh three. Uh, not separated from Evil Hardcore by a line for some reason, but I like it. I kind of like it forty three twelve for fourth place for Evil Hardcore right now. Zed Sun Venus at fifth for forty three thirty seven. Velo's Fury in sixth place right now at 43-43. Two guys, Fogaka in 43-52 in seventh place. ZR Scott Saltar in eighth place at 43-56. And Velo's Vipers, 44, almost flat, practically with a point zero two one on the back end of it at ninth place. And Crowgen, Emus, 44-12. You know what's interesting, Dave, to me is that these... Team time trial across everything. They are the most creative with the team names and they, I mean, they, it's, a, I don't know how they do it, but they are the most eclectic, creative kind of out there. I don't want to say out there. What's another word that I can use for just like, just well, very creative names that they come up with that are very challenging though. They get us to learn things. <laughs> you learn a lot about language with these team names. Uh, and animals and nations and i mean yeah i completely agree there's something about the creativity when you get that group of people together and maybe the release of endorphins that goes on and the amount of time that they spend together as well as you know friendships definitely uh like fine wine improve over time that's for sure or the good ones do so yeah very very cool though um i mean nathan actually uh, to put a cap on that point even stuff like science right like atomic racing and omegas and space i mean these teams explore so many different unique things in this life experience and evil lightning on top of the table here is this is going to be our mocha category mocha, correct yep mocha category there we go so evil lightning there on top of the table that shows you how much WTRL we did, that I can remember that based on. Yeah, memory's amazing. Swedish Swift Racers, M1 in second, four-star Omega in at third. You can see that winning time at 45.57. Let's see if that holds on for Evo Lightning through the rest of the day here on World Cup Day on WTRL. TFC, that's the Friday Criterium. Hurricane Edition in fourth. Fellows Victory in fifth. Eat Dirtois in sixth. It's uh, Z Z U four R Arn in seventh. TBR Team The Big Ring Renegades eighth. Adam Racing Team Krypton ninth, and Coalition Tempest in tenth right now. Just two seconds off of that ninth place spot. Back to you, Nathan. Just going to update this real quickly to make sure we have the most. Oh, of course, now we, we update it, and it says, oh, we're going to break. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have updated it. Oh, boy. I'm going to see if we can get this to come back through uh, real quickly. It is some new boards that we are working with here, everybody. So um, see what we can do to get this coming back in. Interesting. That, they look uh, really good. They do. The they look. They look amazing. Since... There we go. Got it back in, and it is still going to be Wahoo Lakoa Vitesse comes in at a forty thirty nine six oh five Aquila ESRT led up by the Emma Belfort there at forty fifty three Ernie and RT come across with forty one oh eight as we saw them on screen. TSZ Simon Rolls. Good to see him out there today. TSZ forty two thirteen Synergy Heat as Penner led them across the line. 
42-35 right now. And then it's going to be the BL13 Thundercats absolutely loving what BL13 has been doing for women's racing and bringing that new team in in the last year at a 43-38 right now. They've got that sweet-looking new kit. Well, it's not new kit any longer. It's new to me. It still feels new with how cool that new that kit they have is, actually, the BL13 Thundercats and that ladies' crew. Uh, loving it. Synergy Power there, Dave. That's the uh, Vienna Frappe. Thanks, Nathan. And they're on top of the table with the quick, quick 43-19. It was close, though. Yorkshire Gold plan sitting second with the 43-35. And then 43-37 was that time for Riot just a couple seconds out. So what a Donnybrook. This one was. And it's still not over. This is zone 21 as this is done and dusted. We've got a chance to look at Synergy Ice sitting in fourth. Opera ESRT in fifth. Aeonian Breakaway for sixth. Wahoo Lacole Etoile in seventh. The NZ Bro Pavlova's in eighth. The Vikings Valkyrie for ninth. And then tenth at the moment is Wahoo Lacole Grandier. Over to the Latte. Vienna Latte with Crush Pod 2 still crushing it. Years of TTT, it pays off for them. It's going to be Galaxy Supernova Velocity. A lot of familiar names here. 43, 45, 34, excuse me. For bike, born to bike women. That's a new team to me. Cool to see that name out there. You have to look into this and see what they're all about because they're holding down a third place right now at 46, 10. It's going to be CMC Lionesses just behind one second in fourth place there. 46, 11. NZ Bro Ghost Chups. 46.28. Level Watts up in sixth place at 46.34 right now. Galaxy Supernova Stellar, 48.47. The owls are out there. Older women in Lycra nice. still holding it down. 51 minutes. Great to see them in eighth place right now overall on the day. Now, only three starters for the Cowley Road Condors Latte still on the leaderboard. Nice job. If that's, if that's right with only three or maybe only three across the line. Not sure which one that is, but either way. Still, a nice. it must have been starting with either three or four because it's not allowed otherwise at 53.11. And then it's going to be Vegan Dolphins at a 54.56. Nice job in our Vienna Lattes. Let's head on over to the Viennas, the uh, Vienna Mocha. This is going to be the Christmas Bees at the, t at the top, Dave. Uh, somewhat concerned that there's non-vegan dolphins that must exist after I saw that. So, all right, Kirkmeyer Team Bees in for the win. Uh, well, I should say in with the fastest time at the moment with the 46.18. Synergy Force was right there, sitting in second as it stands with Crushpod Cortado in third. Aeonian Chicas in fourth. It's going to be Zed Sun Quasars, followed by their uh, sister team, the Neowise there. Neowise Zed Sun R in sixth. Adam Racing Team, ART Electron seventh. WCC Infernos in eighth. It's Galaxy Supernova Blast sitting in ninth, and then Speedcore ESRT will look to hold on to that tenth fastest time of the day. We'll see if they can pull it off or not when we check back in at WTRL.racing. All right, that's way more than eight riders on that team <laughs> that you were looking at. Yeah, it's the Coco team. It's the Coco team. The Coco's out riding. There yeah, you go. Yeah, there oh. it is. This is the uh, Pacer, Pacer bot. bot. Yep. Good to see. Lots of, uh, reminds me of the big spin a little bit, actually, for some reason. Have you got, have you, have you done any big spins, Dave? Have no. you done any? Oh, no. come on. See, I did, maybe it's good because you would have got addicted like the rest of us. <laughs> right. I, was, no. I saw, I want those headphones. But I saw James Bailey. It's been uh, the, the he didn't get his and he's been riding a lot. So uh, really, really well done. I must say I, I need to get back home and get on Zwift. Anna just sent me an image, actually let me know that she got her beret today. This is literally in my discord right now. Hey, I got it. There it is. He's got a beret. And I'm, that's the one piece I don't have is just the beret. Ah, and now I'm probably going to go jump on. Uh, maybe not right now. Maybe a little bit later. <laughs> it's funny. I'll watch for my companion app to tell me that you're on and I'll know what you're going for. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's been full gas because when you're going Dave for as many spins to win, there's only a certain time limit, right? So we're like pushing it. We talked a lot about it actually on the wrap last night. A lot of, you know, there's actually somebody in the, in the community put together a, um, X, Y graph to show what the probability is for getting all of huh. the um, items and then how many spins. And there's like a point 
zero two percent chance to get all of them in six or it was like eight spins or something and then there's a 99 percent chance that you will get all of them in 51 spins and if you don't huh. you're like a one percenter or something yeah it was really interesting there's a couple of assumptions in his stats but he's a statistician this guy in the community and he's an avid listener of the rap so he sent us this this graph <laughs> it was great actually that's fascinating so you know you have incredibly bad luck if you ride fifty times and you. There don't were people get in chat parade. too. There right. were people in chat saying yeah. that they've ridden like fifty spins and still haven't gotten one of these pieces. I was like, oh man. I bad. saw someone else saying, "You know what? I don't feel bad because it's not throwing shade on Swift." But someone saying, "I just got the the crappy New York hat." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, that's a, that's definitely not the as cool as the beret then." It, oh man a, i like the new york hat. hat the most i like that yeah. one well not the most at all the headgear the headphones are the coolest out of all the headgear. that's cool yeah yeah by far so so well i'm looking well, forward James to Bailey seeing um him. i hope so too i mean he deserves it since he's the one who sets up the events right so <laughs> It shows you he's not rigging anything. That's right. You know, it yeah, definitely... it does. It does show you that. Dave, I'm looking forward to Belgian Waffle Ride this weekend, at least to hear your voice over some of the Instagram reels and to see the results. Uh, if anybody's in the area, you know, there's probably people down there. And it hey. sounds like the weather might not be, there might be Zwifters, but like, you know, where are you and how, can people show up and say hi? Sure, but... Yeah, let me connect the dots for you. So Cedar City, which is pretty, uh, it's southern Utah. St. George is just down the road, and then Las Vegas is. So it's halfway between, or not quite halfway, but in between Salt Lake City and Las Vegas. But it's really there's known nothing. for Bryce Is that like there's nothing well, there? Or? Well, you could say there's nothing, but you could also say there's everything. Because okay. Zion and Bryce Canyon and uh, the Big Five, which are these incredible national parks that Bryce and Zion are, I'm mythical looking at it right now. Parks okay, that yeah, we have. yeah, and, okay. And arches and canyon lands, and Whoa. so these are some of the most incredible, mind blowing places on the planet. So that's I'm 40 miles away from right there now. So. So uh, the racers, because it's so cold here, or it's actually not that cold today, but it's going to become cold. Uh, there's, you can feel it, the wind. And they, they had to lower. And you had an experience in Moab last year when you were racing there with Gabby, where you understand the high desert, it, it's, it's as cold as it gets. Uh, it just cuts right through you when it's 25 degrees and windy in the, in the desert. So they had to... Change the start time. We're going to be starting a little bit later into the day. We'll be warmer, and they're not going to race quite as high. The distances are a little bit shorter. But, yeah, that's what that's what you get in America when you get away from the big cities. This country has some absolutely epic terrain. So, Have Nathan, you seen any of these remember, guys? <laughs> uh, not near my hotel. <laughs> there, boy, that's a lot of them. Yeah. Um, wow. So, Nathan, remember... Remember how much fun we had going back three years ago with the Gantova situation? And uh, you remember Nadia? And, mm -hmm. 100%. Uh, she, yeah. She was. Yeah. This is one of the things that you helped create with your platform with Swift Community Live is. Um, and I've seen it happen with athletes besides Nadia. But she was not a bike racer at all. She was a rower. Came out of. Uh, British Columbia, got into Zwift during lockdown of pandemic, showed she had some real talent, and met the community and fell in love with bike racing. She followed a path that took her now. She's on a team called DNA, which is one of the biggest American teams. You might even say the biggest American team right now. They're run by a, a couple up in uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, that to, to have done an incredible job of supporting women racers. So Nadia Gantova, who's now on that pro team, is going to be coming to Belgian Waffle Ride. Really? And she very well could. Yeah, and she could win it. I actually would put her into my, she's not a favorite, but knowing what we know and knowing what the work she's done, she could win it. It'd be a surprise for some people, but it won't be for Zwift Community Live as she's one of our own. 
So that sort of connects all those dots. That's how this this uh, quasi cycle verse that we live. Well, in, Gravel right? does that a little a, bit as well, doesn't it? Gravel's pretty good sure. at connecting the dots. I feel like. Right, and that's why I'm just gonna. You know, we've talked about it off uh, air a lot, but you know, getting those women. I wasn't really completely joking during the broadcast when I was talking about that group of women on the WCL team. Can you imagine if you were to get Zoe Langham to come do a gravel race? With Zoe Mika Langham, Mika, Gabby. Let's get Tiffany Penner to come Penner, down. Like I bet you Tiffany like, Penner I mean, would be you fun. You could put together some serious gravel you know, power and results, I think, from the Zwift world. 100%. It would be pretty cool. And just good people. Good people that already know how to support each other and lift each other up. 100%. And well, it would be really cool. We have a great time commentating. I'm excited to see the reels and how the results go. Also, we'll be watching the FEMS this weekend. Um, but that's going to be up for us for ZCL for this week. We'll see you on Monday for Lap It Up, stage number two. Super excited for that, everybody. If you haven't done so already, hit those follow buttons. Uh, subscribe wherever you are watching. We've been live on Twitch, uh, YouTube, and X today. It helps the channel out a ton, and we'll see you on Monday for the Z Racing Crew. Thank you so much to WTRL for putting this on. If you're looking for results, head over to WTRL.Racing for the World Cup as it continues on throughout the rest of the day. We'll see if those times hold on. But from Dave and I, that's it for the day. As always, ride on.